Hi there, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Cedric. I'm an actor, a filmmaker, a screenwriter, and a YouTube reactor. And this is my second Stray Kids song. The first was God's Menu, and I listen to it a lot. I already have a favorite. It's the guy with the low voice. I don't know his name. Felix? Was that his name? It's been too long, and I apologize for how long it has been. I've listened to God's Menu many times in between my reaction and now. So I thought, hey, let me go watch the one that everyone said I should watch then. And I just didn't because I'm a failure and I let all of you down, and I have to live with that. Thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your support. Thank you for allowing me to focus on all the stuff I have to do for acting and, and writing and directing and the meetings I have and um, all the stuff that's ongoing, the stuff I've been able to tell you about, the stuff I've been able to tell everyone else about, and the stuff I haven't been able to tell any of you about. There's a lot of all of that, and um, I'm just grateful for your support. So thank you for making that possible. Thank you for keeping this YouTube channel possible. Um, I feel like I'm on the old PBS, like, this channel would not be possible without your financial contribution. But it's true. So thank you. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to add other than I really enjoyed my last Stray Kids. If I remember right, it's a little bit more like metal rap influence than what I'm used to. And that's what I love just about like the general K-pop genre is like everything is going to be different every time you listen to it. Like no two groups are the same. And I think that's great. And I think that's why it's silly sometimes when one, people say it all sounds the same. Cause like, no, you're just ignorant. And two, when people are like, ugh, this group sucks. It's like, no, they're just different. I've seen several K-pop groups now and every one of them has been incredible. So uh, <laughs> they're all great. What a bounty of riches. That's like people saying like, oh, you, House of the Dragon versus the Rings of Power. Like, no, we have two really good fantasy shows happening right now. Three, if you count The Witcher. And all y'all can fight over them all you want. As for me, I will be very happy to just watch every one of them because they're great. How fortunate are we that there's this many good fantasy shows right now? The same is true of these groups. So let's check out Stray Kids Thunderous. I don't know what to expect at all. I hope Felix has a little voice in this. I'm pretty sure Felix is his name. Sorry if I'm wrong. Let's jump in. Stray Kids Thunderous. <laughs> Cool. Love it. There's several things that I love about this. One is the use of the wipe transitions. I love the visual and the auditory transitions that Stray Kids uses because, for example, in the one, they had the guy cross frame and then they cut the shot on whatever was on his back. It looked like a sword, maybe. But all you really have to do to do that is this. Just have something fully crossing frame. It's that simple. They do that. They've done a couple other transitions where it goes blurry and then pops back. And then auditory stuff like having the car horn or having a quick two hits on the sticks. It keeps you kind of guessing with what's coming next. Now, especially with this, they've got a heavy bass going and it's called Thunderous, of course. But also like this hyper realistic where the background kind of constantly has this bright white floodlight, which does help with just being able to see the background and then supplementing it with some other lights here and there that are actually in frame and that sort of are, are practical and function within the world. But they're not asking you to suspend your disbelief and think that this is a real world situation. So the whole thing kind of has this sense of this sort of a dreamlike state to this whole thing and with how quick the transitions are, especially with the opening being animated, which was super cool. And then having some really solid VFX with the floating stuff around them early on. Um, some really, really neat visuals with this, some great cuts, quick, high energy, the usual like wild production. I say usual, like I've only heard one of their songs, but that's how quickly they can establish an identity um, from, a, from a mix standpoint, from the sound point of, of how it sounds, the sound point. Did I say that? That's not a word. <laughs> Let's keep going. That was cool. 
nice wide angle. Cool. <laughs> that was good. So the way that that would happen is you basically have the camera hold. It's it's like a jump cut. Like I we did it in my movie Kitty of the World with him, which you can stream on Amazon and Vudu right now if you live in the United States. But basically to have that effect work is you just have the person that's in frame has to freeze and then everybody else gets in space and then you go. Um or they shot it on green screen, which would make that a little bit easier, but there's two different ways to make it work. But how effective is it? It doesn't matter how they did it. It's effective. What a way to push energy in. That was so cool. Let's watch it again. Nice wipe here with the smoke. So good. Oh, nice. Dirty. <laughs> Nice. So they're not really changing cinematography styles. I think they did a lot in God's Menu with each different location they did. But this has all been very controlled, kind of that mechanized movement, quick push-ins, a lot of cuts. And I think that it works for this song. And it's a nice way to show adaptability between styles and between songs, depending on what the needs of it are. They are changing costumes and they're changing effects. But again, the point of this feels a lot more injecting energy and not look at all these different things we are or can be. The production design is great. Having everything pasted up against the walls or having everybody dancing out in that courtyard with the giant circles behind them. There's just, there's a lot visually to keep this appealing, to keep it cinematic, to keep it um, high energy and high budget feeling, which is important with a group like this to like feel like, yeah, they put a lot of effort into this and it really, really clicks. They're also, I'm getting a better sense of who they are as individuals because of that. Sorry, there were sirens. It scared me. Okay, let's go. See what I mean by a lot of that push in and cut? Sorry, my screen froze. Let's go back. <laughs> that wasn't wasn't ideal. Let's go back 10 seconds. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that. Why are you doing this? Sorry, technical difficulties. Where's my Wi-Fi out? We'll be right back. My Wi-Fi went out, so I got it fixed now. Sorry about, that really wasn't a delay for you guys, I guess, but sorry for all of that. Uh, that was annoying, so got it fixed. Here we go. Uh, I've got it at 140, so let's redo this. Let's see where it goes, I guess, is what I mean. Uh. <laughs> That's a cool voice. Oh, cool. 
Notice how they're using a lot of wide angle lenses, which sort of distort the view of what you're seeing and a lot of low angle shots. And so you're getting this kind of fishbowl look, getting them looking very large in frame, even, even compared to these massive buildings. And the point of that is to give them on screen power. It's to make them look bigger. The fact that they're wearing red, which really pops against everything. Even on the, the dance battle scenes, they're looking huge in frame, like bigger than they should in frame. And that's all hyper intentional to give them this sense of, of this sort of magnificent power of this magnetism to them. And at the same time, when they're doing the close-ups, the, the, the focus is so tight, it's so shallow that they still look powerful in the frame because your eye is just drawn to them. And even if it's not low angle, even if they're just, they fill the frame, they fill it. And I think it's great because then the choreography looks even cooler than it is. And I have to say the one part where they were all on like one foot doing the turns and the kicks, that was pretty cool. That was pretty dope. Big fan of that. Let's keep going. Nice. Another cool transition. Outstanding. Outstanding. Very good. No notes. That was great. They're great. Big fan. Oh, it gets back. It's the same thing. It's this big, powerful stuff from them. Like, that's their energy. High energy. Powerful, rhythm-based stuff with a lot of that, that, that. That kind of rhythm that's super important to them. Similar to Blackpink with kind of a vocal percussivity with how they approach songs. Certainly a lot of that kind of youthful energy, a lot of aggression in their performance, which I really like. I think it works really well for them. And I love that they have that identity and I love that um, I've heard two of their songs now and I'm pretty sure I could immediately be like, oh, this is a Stray Kids song if it came on because um, like they established a brand really well and it's super impressive. And visually it was fantastic. The choreography was great. Love, like I'm, I'm able to hear distinctions between the voices, which is cool. Having only heard two of their songs, like they all have clear, distinct voices, which is neat. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Sorry about the technical snafu in the middle there, but um, hopefully I'll see you next time. But until then, please drink lots of water. Please take care of yourselves, fix your posture, and uh, I'll see you then. Be well.